Everybody, this is Nate Kern. He's a BMW ambassador, test rider, extraordinaire. Also, a lot of you guys know him for his RIT racing exploits. Uh, and we have Dominic Loss here. Uh, hey there. Product manager. Yeah, product manager for this for this baby and as well for the S1000R and the S1000XR. Let's do it. So, first of all, I mean, we are making, we're trying to make a really nice product for you guys, but in the end, I want to say a big thank you because you as the riders and the community make our brand how it is. And so you are all the reason why we can make such bikes. So I have to firstly thank you guys for being here. Thank you to also for the, the dealership. And um, yeah, Nate, let's talk about the new M1000R. Well, it's, it's right up front, why? Why an M1000 single R when we already have the double R? Yeah, the question is easy to answer because it's why not? I mean, we have all we have all options in in our house. We have a great base with the S1000R. We have the double R, and we combined the superbike DNA um, with our roadsters abilities and put it in one bike, and this with uh, 205 horsepower in the US. Yeah, I mean. It, at, at the end, all the fancy talk, when you have to narrow down why and how the M1000 single R is a r real world, again, they like to call it a roadster, but to have an upright uh, naked bike in the U.S. market where traditionally naked bikes have struggled, now we're pairing that with the la latest, greatest class leading electronics. So we can talk about power all day long. Power is nothing without control. I know that sounds cliche, but it's the truth. So when you have the ability to pair an already stable chassis that just laughs at you, literally saying, is that all you got, you know? Um, or the ability to take the electronics that trickle down. This is truly the highest level of, of electronic support in a performance oriented, right, setting, whether it's closed course, on the street, as you're, you're pushing, hopefully, staying within your skill set, you know? Um, all the electronics in the world won't keep you from running out of skill. But with that being said, when you combine already the S1000 single R with the M1000 double R, this is what you get, which is a real world riding position and the ability to still a la carte the menu. Yep. For, and we'll get into that with the pro riding modes, but to be able to basically take uh, the power, but the um, forgiveness without losing without losing that in translation in the middle. Yeah, yeah, that was actually also the idea behind. So there are two steps behind. One is um, we introduced M firstly in, in the doubler and uh, M is the strongest letter in the world. And for, for BMW since 50 years, this year we had our 50th anniversary. It's like a huge thing. And of course, after the M doubler and MR was our, our next step and um, as Nate said, um, we wanted to combine, if you go on twisty country roads, if you go meet your friends uh, at a bar or something, and then on the weekend you also can show up at a track day and then battle with the superbikes. So I just would like to go in some details of the uh, um, before we come to all our nice new features on the electronic sides. Absolutely. So, I mean, what obviously here we have the um, AM competition package. Um, so that means it comes in all black and with a lot of carbon parts and as well our really light carbon wheels. But already in base, all the features are integrated. So you already get forged wheels, you have a nice white color. So if you're looking for extremely exclusive version, you're getting this one. And um, but naturally, it wouldn't be an M if we change the performance. Yes. So the performance of the forged wheels, there is is already one step. It, yes, exactly one step up from cast wheels. But in regards to engine performance, suspension, the electronics, uh, ha going with the base package does not change the performance. Off it the bike. just naturally um, still looks great but then you go from great to sexy yeah you know? that's so. the point to some exclusivity yeah. and also like um, starting off with the features we have on the bike in general so 
first thing you see is now, especially if you see it in first time in real life, the wing lights. And I got the question a lot also from the uh, press colleagues when we have been to Spain uh, in Almeria uh, to make our um, te first test of the bikes. Um, do we really need these winglets? So it actually, the answer is also clearly yes, because um, starting at around 80 miles per hour, um, the effect of the winglets is starting off and it, go, it, it increases heavily. So that means we have, you have to translate it then in pounds. So uh, at around um, 130 miles, we have already almost 12 kilos of uh, downforce. Yeah, I, I would have to Google that, what 12 yeah. kilos is. But uh, for our um, friends, ultimately, it's stability. Yeah. As we generate downforce to, to, you know, keep it in caveman terms, you know what I'm saying? I have to appeal to other cavemen, right? Uh, reality is downforce isn't just for acceleration. Downforce is also for deceleration from really high rates of speed where there's still downforce being generated. But also, if you're thinking about decelerating but also a third gear corner where there's enough downforce that you that you absolutely don't realize you need until you take the wings off and that's part of testing in testing and development it's not just wind tunnel generated yeah. right it's live testing so to be able to go out and push without the winglets and then push hard with the winglets there's a, there's a confidence um, doesn't matter if it's a little or a lot depending on skill set depending on again the elements that confidence through stability is truly what you need when you're hopefully again riding within your skill set in the right environment. Um, you you need that with all this power. You also need to honestly, if you don't mind me just throwing it in there. Yeah, do it. You need to work out your neck muscles because the amount of power that this generates in the lateral grip and force, not going into the complete rear geometry of the motorcycle, but when you have the weight biasness from clip-ons to sitting more upright with more weight over the rear shock, the drives off the corner, there's even more grip. And that grip, I mean, it's you're, you're holding on, squeezing the trigger, and all that sounds exciting and fascinating, right? Ah, well, I don't know if that's for me, or I don't know if I'm there in my skill set. You can literally already ride in the pre-calibrated street modes that we've already worked out at what degree of lean you can apply throttle. and wheel speed sensors, lean angle from the six axis. But when you start having the ability to trust the, the, the electronics and you start dialing them down and you're just peeling back little layers too, which is nice. You can really grow with the M1000 single R and any of our uh, double R products and S and M products having the ability to, to a la carte the menu, which I, I like to spend a lot of time on the electronics because at the end of the day, um, we're still human. We have to have the ability to not just have a have a motorcycle, right? That tends to, you know, let you know who's boss, right? You need to limit yourself, and a lot of that comes with the education that the dealership, that Riverside, especially with with the relationships with a lot of dealers nationwide that I spend a lot of time with, being able to educate the staff directly from what we do in testing and how the motorcycles really work. Um, it's, it's, it's a privilege to have Dominic come over um, because he spent quite a bit of time with us in Spain on track. So you can admit, your learning curve is like this. Yeah. Being on track with riders like, you know. You. Well, no, nah, I just, I'm getting a little older. Ah, uh, no, no. Smelt, but, uh, you know, Still in uh, a good shape. But the reality is, I really, truly love the fact that you can customize the M1000 single R to your skill set and to your environment. So later we can get into how and why. Yeah. And um, after coming to Winglets, I think besides the engine, the pinnacle of engineering, I think the M brakes out of the M double R is, is giving you so much confidence in, in braking performance. And uh, we're getting there also with the race pro modes, how you can adjust it and with the M brakes, we have now also um, the stoppy control inside. So it allows you, if you go lower than 30 miles per hour, you can do a nice stoppy in the pit lane. It makes you Sorry, at I'm least the coolest, the coolest rider on the track. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, same with the wheelie control. 
But again, that, and that's the beauty of these systems. So for us to try and um, not find out the hard way, right? In regards to stoppies, in regards to wheelies, there's so many countless tens of thousands of laps. If you really want to add it up since the systems were, were even um, innovated, that yes, again, hopefully you understand how the system works but you have so much at your fingertips that it will allow you to, you know, fulfill some dreams without finding out the hard way. Yeah. Truly, I mean, it's, yeah. it's unbelievable. The four levels of wheelie control that uh, in caveman terms, zero. Yes, you can over rotate and, and uh, again, run out of skill. Level one, definitely a decent, oh, level. A decent yeah. amount, a decent amount of wheelie. But at a certain point with wheel speed sensors, and again, the six axis lean angle sensor at a certain point, we realized you just, it, you can't, you said, hey, I don't want to wheelie completely all the way over. Um, level two, even lower, level three is just cheating. Yeah. I mean, you're laughing in your helmet and now you do it on purpose. <laughs> but again, why do we ride? You know, why do we ride for, and we all have different definitions, but the foundation is fun. You know, yeah. the foundation is filling our cups. So. We gave you the ability to do it safer. Yeah. In the story. Yeah, definitely. And the most fun is having it in level one. You can do wheelies and shift gears in between still. Yeah, and it doesn't, it actually, it doesn't slam down like the first ever, you know, calibrations of wheelie control. Um, there wasn't enough data. There wasn't enough testing. It hadn't been around long enough. And as you see each generation progress, now it's so seamless and so nice. Um, the way the way everything sets down, which we're, leads into some of our newer technology with the uh, with the uh, engine brake torque management. So yeah. go ahead, I don't yeah. want to steal his thunder. No, no, yeah. it's fine. Um, yeah. So you also can adjust like in three levels the engine brake, and um, this allows you like for a track or also for street ride to um, go into the corners smoother and uh, with how much braking torque you want to have. We come to the details anyway when we go through the presentation about yes. um, the new s 1000 R. And um, so what's, I think we should talk now about the differences between the s 1000 R and the M1000 R. And we already talked about the reason why, because we can, but um, in the end, what do we change? Um, so the only, thing who stayed the same is the main frame and the rear frame and besides that we put every stone new so for example we have a completely new seating position which is more front wheel orientated because of a new handlebar a different mounting position so you have a more front wheel oriented um, riding position which helps you also going onto the track and um, then uh, we have an adjustable steering timbre to put it to your needs. You have the full race promos and the TTC shift. And most important, you have um, now here the shift cam engine, which allows you to have higher RPMs and uh, of course also more, um, more peak power in the end. Yep. Yeah. yeah, of course then we talked about it already, the amp brakes. Also the mirrors are in standard and that's a fact, actually, not so many people are aware of. You can also f swap them around and have them on the downside, and then um, it, it looks even cooler. Yeah. <laughs> so keeping a nice lower, flatter line. Yes, that's that the cafe idea behind feel. So you're mixing that cafe feel with the... So it, it's cool to have almost an analog style cafe feel, but with digital technology. Yeah. And again, it's unbelievable to be able to adapt any of our s and m products where all that technology trickles down to your rts your k bikes your gs's if you ever wonder where it de truly derives from it's from the highest levels it's just brought down to what each model's purpose and function is in the real world yep. so uh from there i will tell you the engine braking that he mentioned i live in north georgia and going up in the mountains which I rarely actually rode on, a sh I haven't, I've ridden more on the street since some of the latest chassis and technologies have come out because they're more progressive and easier to ride. And 
I wouldn't say uh, less stressful, but just they're just nicer and more enjoyable to ride with the direction our 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 chassis are going in and the direction of the electronics and the throttle response. But going uphill to have that versatility, I'll set my pro riding modes at level one for engine braking. Because if you're going uphill and you have to roll off just a little bit because it's a new road or traffic in front of you, you don't want to lose all that momentum with the dece with the big crank decelerating too quickly. So I'll set up pro riding modes going uphill. Yep. We have a nice lunch. Now it's time to go downhill. Go right into pro riding mode too, where I set it at maximum. So now you don't have to trail brake into the corners and to be able to roll off, not roll off, but roll off and have that ability for that engine braking to pull you down into the corner and tighten up corners the way a leader bike should or a twin, right? There's so much engine braking for an inline four cylinder yeah. that is just, again, that's the fun factor. It adds to the ride. Yeah. And then a big change as well. We did a lot of changes in our dynamic damping controls or the DDC. So um, we adjusted it that it's rideable on the street and also rideable on the racetrack. So it's a huge range we can adapt with this uh, dynamic damping control. The cool thing about this, um, in our modes like rain, road, dynamic and race, you have a dynamic damping. So it adjusts to the need of the street by, by itself. It also adjusts um, the throttle response, the engine power regarding torque, how much torque you have. From race on, you have full torque at first gear. And that's something special. Not not everybody in manufacturer can make it that you have full torque in first gear. And um, and if you go then in the race pro modes, we talked about it. You have the possibility. You have we call it a electronic screwdriver. You actually have then a, a manual um, suspension. So it's one suspension you can do everything with, having your adjustments for a racetrack. But on the street, you can adjust it to the needs. The, the changing needs of the streets. Exactly, the versatility in the DDC, I mean, dynamic dampening control, dynamic, it's constantly adjusting and it's taking four measurements basically, yep. lean angle from the lean angle sensor, yes. shock travel from, from the potentiometer, and it's taking brake and throttle percentage. So at the end of the day, all that fancy talk again equates into, depending on which mode you're in for the DDC, yep is how much it really transfers to you, to your second shock, which is your spine. So you can literally set up um, a system that's so dynamic for all the changing conditions on the road. There are certain parts of this city I've ridden in where the roads aren't, aren't the best, and uh, especially all over our country, northern markets where the roads get torn up from uh, the winter. It's amazing, every 10 milliseconds, it's calculating what the suspension dampening should be. The rebound and compression every 10 milliseconds is being um, dictated by all four measurements. Yeah, and this all together, we've also now uh, have a uh, um, steering damper, which you can adjust it to the needs you, you want to have it manually. And um, then we, of course, also try to um, diverse it a bit from the S1000R in regards to styling. So we tried to keep everything in black. So rear frame, fork, uh, triple clamp, everything is more likely made a little bit more madness kind of yeah. style. Yeah, no, Mad Max is still um, <laughs> going strong in Germany, I think. So <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, so truly though, the milled rear sets, the milled shift lever, the milled levers for the brake and the clutch that's all part of the competition package also yeah uh, in the competition it's that's what you get when you order the competition also already the uh, the rear passenger kit with the the cover and also with the passenger seat if you're if you um, order our white one the standard version you already get uh, um, the levers okay so you still get the mill yeah yeah nice. you still get the mill the levers but um, you don't get directly from Fractor, but we of course have them as well. Yeah, right. um, the foot packs as well. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah. So, what else should we talk about? Some um, more product? I'm still remembering uh, two days ago, I had a chance to ride this here 
in the Southern California market at a new track at Chuck Walla. And again, just the smiles, again, smiles for miles. That sounds so cliche. <laughs> but literally, when the opportunity to get out there and to be able to sit upright a little more and then go out again into an environment where uh, seemingly everything should be clip ons, everything should have full fairings, everything should have a windshield. And to be able to know that you can go out, fill your cup, again, within hopefully your skill set, and you can bump that skill set up with the M or the S, double R or single R, because you just have so much versatility in the electronics. You can peel away little layers of insurance, if you ask yeah. me, that hopefully parallel, again, your, your skill set, but also the elements. So I went out, and it was literally 40 degrees in the morning, no tire warmers, release compound on brand new Pirellis. And what does that mean? DTC, dynamic traction control, doesn't create traction. It just manages what you have. Yeah. So is there a certain level of common sense that you have to have with it? Yes. And as I'm two laps into it, I say, you know, no matter how many, again, probably in the, in the uh, five digits of laps I've had yeah. in my career, which I still pinch myself. I can't believe, you know, I'm, I'm actually doing it. But uh, it's just wild that uh, I said, you know, my brain's feeling good, body's feeling good, definitely should be warm enough to start to squeeze the trigger a little bit more. The system intervened when it said, no, Nate, the right side of the tire is still cold because of the direction we were running in counterclockwise there as more left-hand turns and right-hand turns. I know that. You think I would know that over, again, five digits worth of laps worldwide. And it was nice to have that intervention coming onto the front straightaway to let me know rear wheel speed had a spike. And the system came in so seamlessly before I could ever catch anything. And it was minimal, such minimal, virtually no geometry change that after a while you just start kind of doing it on purpose because it feels good and it feels right and it makes you feel better than you really are. But as things come up with tire temperature, asphalt temperature, to be able to reach over and start dialing down and find almost like a, a fine fitting suit a tailored suit, custom suit to be able to to tailor the dtc on the fly with 15 levels it's it's unbelievable yeah. yeah and i will say it again but it's really that's the neat thing about this bike is having the diversity and the possibility to um have some nice rides on the street sitting upright but on the racetrack, you, uh, there's no issue pedaling with the super bikes. Yeah, you just, that's, you just that's can't most stop laughing in regards to the <laughs> absolute, um, I don't even like to use the word brute or brutal because no. it, it's, it's not, it's so controlled. Yeah. It's such controlled power off the corner and the, the, the lateral grip again from the, the riding position, the seating position, there's so much drive off the corner, which a lot of people hopefully ride for this. And you're not going to have a lot of this and too much of this if you don't start getting into understanding, you know, again, line selection, body position. You can get away with so much um, with all the leverage in the bars and having that ability, again, on the track yeah. to have a ton of fun. But you know what? Maybe switch suits and gear if you're close enough um, and to be able to ride it the next day to the coffee shop up in the canyons anywhere it's just a it's a real world m for yep. everybody yeah yeah let's just talk about what is new i mean we already had a lot of stuff in there <laughs> yes um but yeah slide control is new the engine brake control the brake slide assist the brake slide assist you actually also have in the the mr and then abs pro ratios we have optimized it and then we talk about this, the stoppy feature and um so we go now through one by one, and I think, Nate, that's your favorite one. You can explain it. it. It really is. It's to the point now where we have a steering head sensor box. So it actually measures steering head angle and takes that extra information and measurement tied in with the lean angle sensor, tied in with the wheel speed sensor. So it's taking four measurements now and dictating how much positive wheel slip you can have off the corner without just DTC. So DTC would intervene in the model year 22 to let you, again, keep you in control, but to stop the slide. Yeah. Now, how great would it be to actually slide some more and not run out of skill? 
it's, it's to the point where the best analogy I can give for those of you that have reached that point in your riding, hopefully um, purposely and not unintentionally, having your knee on the ground with hopefully the right suit and the talk, yada, yada. Um, the first time it touches, you're like, ooh, what just happened? You know, it's like a baby, you know, it's the greatest thing, you know? Um, but then next thing you know, oh, I know the threshold, I know what it takes, so I'm gonna replicate it. And now you start pushing your knee in harder and harder because both eyes open to where the slide control's the same, the same way as we dial down the DTC, the dynamic traction control, to induce wheel spin. Who would want to spin up the rear? Absolutely. Yeah. It's just a next level of fun, controlled. So with a brand new rear tire, obviously the slide control is going to not work as easily because you have so much performance in the tire, but as the tire degrades, it starts to drop off. You're just like, oh, here we go. Let's see. And you'll hear a little, at big lean angle, you'll start to screw on the trigger, you know, earlier than you're used to. And as you start to squeeze the trigger and screw on the throttle, whatever you want to call it, you're knowing at that lean angle on the small part of the tire, depending on the tire manufacturer too, each carcass is different. It's just going to spin up or, or not as much. But I will tell you, as you start to get the audible before the actual physical slide, you just shut one eye and you just keep staying in it. It starts to light up. At a certain point, it realizes slip rate, positive wheel slip versus steering head angle. It's already pre-calibrated through our testing how much it could actually handle before it comes all the way around. And it literally, the rear wheel feels like it hits a berm and it just stays there all the way off the door. You can just squeeze it all the way on just us. Uh, so, so, so what kind of yeah. thing. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. some pro feeling on a bike uh, yeah it makes me feel yeah yeah <laughs> and um yeah two other things you shouldn't tell the tire manufacturers but now we can really um if the tire goes down um our uh, colleagues from development they tested um brand new tires lap times and then worn tires where then there's no nothing left on the tires and they had only because of the slide control one second off and that's, I would say, that's a huge statement for, for the slide control. Yeah. But again, the settings, we back up one. Yeah. Naturally, we source the support from settings six, five, and four from what's already predetermined, which is minimal. Um, setting three is race, as you can see, but setting two has the, is the most active, the most fun mode where if you go into setting one it's all through your multi-function wheel and the pro riding modes that you can set all this up but setting one is it's inactive so to be able to jump between pro one and pro two and feel the difference yeah, on the fly on the same lap on the same session that's 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 the beauty of purchasing one of these yep. owning one of these yeah definitely so we are, i think we already talked about on the sled so um, yeah what are the already again what are the we can do power slides and control it even more without uh, DDC mm -hmm. switch control correct and also the system actually also understands camber versus off camber yeah so that's uh, right that's the next level so in regards to how much slip you know naturally off camber is going to give you reduce even easier uh, loss of traction so that's pretty deep. Don't ask me how. We need Wolfie here for that. Yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, and then engine brake torque control. This one is also really, especially. I mean, a good example is actually Al Maria on the racetrack. Yeah, you know, Maria. Um, there's a section of track that literally you come out of a perfect, beautiful 90 degree left hander, um, constant radius. It's, it's, it doesn't decrease. And as you get your eyes up, hopefully early enough, right? Because this is dictated by this. If you can't see, you don't squeeze the trigger. And you trust the system so much that it actually helps again. It helps you progress in your riding, knowing that there's more support so that less things are renting space in your head, keeping your eyes down. So as I'm looking up the track, there's a really nice gradual uh, incline. And as it crests, we're cresting the way almost 50 degree lean. So we go from to 15, excuse me, 
fifteen thousand. The S, the uh, forty-six hundred. Fourteen six again between the M fifteen thousand one hundred RPMs. Yeah. Fourteen thousand six hundred RPMs in second gear. Why not? Because I got all the support. Elements are right, flat out in second gear. And as you crest that hill, what's going to happen on the backside? It's going to unload in third gear as I as I no short shift it. Take it all the way to the top. Leave it in third. 50, almost 50, we're at like 46 degree lean, cresting the hill, and it's already lighting up up the hill, so I'm using the slide control on the exit, but as we crest the hill and everything wants to unload, right, just keeping it on, and the system, you can hear it intervening even more, but now we're gonna transition to the brakes, and everything transferring the weight forward, and, and this is where skill sets come in. Some transfer, some transfer the weight, some have the ability to transfer the weight. No matter what's happening, the steering uh, sensor box, right, paired with, again, the lean angle and the wheel speed sensor, the engine brake torque management literally dictates how out of whack and out of line everything will get. And it shuts down cylinder three and four, as I recall. You mm -hmm. can get in a little bit more technical, mm -hmm. but it doesn't keep the blades closed. The point is, in fancy caveman talk, it keeps everything in a straight line, especially if the rear wheel lifts off the ground with that weight transfer at lean angle. When it sets down, usually, especially if it sets down off the steering head angle, if it's, if it's still pendulum coming in on the brakes, whether you're leaned over or upright, everything wants to get a little squirrely. It will literally dictate all the systems and keep it in a straight line. So now, what does that mean? More fun, you can brake harder, and it's it simple. matches rear wheel speed though yeah so when it sets back down it's going to set down at the engine speed there's not two different speeds so that system is really in-depth when you listen to wolfgang ballner explain it but as a rider what you're going to experience it is unbelievable with the new engine brake torque control definitely yeah so just again in it's in setting one you can you can actually adjust into your needs so if you would like to have for some some if you have like three corners going more likely down you can just do it with going off this roll and the bike is leaning so smooth that's really impressive if, if you put it on the setting screen it really helps to don't because sometimes there are corners if you start then also braking everything gets a little bit nervous and the engine brake is so strong that it really helps you pushing the bike inside to the to the apex correct especially down the back straightaway down maria i mean you're top of fifth gear and again top of fifth gear the faster you go the more challenges what you know about suspension and brakes and application and i can i can't even begin to tell you how okay well let's let's see if uh if we can't push it a little more why not already done countless laps thousands of laps of testing and calibration and now in the real world setting we have 75 journalists from around the world that's different riding styles cultures perspectives and let me tell you some of them are former national and world level champions that became journalists and for all of us on the same track same motorcycles same tires that have the same feedback coming in pushing that brake marker deeper and deeper and deeper waiting trying to get the system to let you know that it, it, it won't handle a higher caliber rider's threshold. All six days on track perform flawlessly and it's, yeah. it's unbelievable how much harder you can brake but how much more periphery you can have without things renting space in your head with all the extra. Mm -hmm. Usually there's a little drama involved on a scale of one to ten. None of it's ever really more than three or four mm -hmm. but when you have a zero now or a one you can just go that much deeper into the corners and on the other side also especially we had as you mentioned we had some uh, former world superbike riders with us there and they they all said uh, normally they the normal systems in the bikes electronics they always harm them to go fast but they said that's the first bike where also they have not the feeling everything is interfering and they can go fast on a standard bike that was also really impressive to yeah, hear. From, from the showroom floor to, to a high level uh, 
caliber of performance with in the hands of again world superbike national caliber riders when you can just take the literally the the braking control and cornering control and merge them together with stabilizing the engine braking it's it's an unbelievable system yeah definitely so but if you all accelerate hard you also have to brake and braking i like to do because uh, it's my my braking zone i like to brake so because with our abs pro you know a good friend of mine is uh, doing the development uh, for this and he spent when he is riding on the track with our abs pro um, as our rear tire looks like when we ride on the, uh, on the racetrack his front tire looks like that because he has all the bubbles there because he's braking into the corner till the apex on full brake abs running and the system allows him he's not falling down i mean of course he was falling down when he made it to uh, he was figuring out what is possible technically but now um, that's that's part of testing that's yeah. part of testing but now it's so good that you can really till grab 400 brakes with our abs pro and that's impressive and gives you some confidence i mean the braking zone is the thing you should work at latest uh, first focus on the uh, line and um, acceleration and yeah, naturally with with line selection right proper body position that's all going to add up to more speed and with more speed you're going to have to brake harder so the abs system the abs pro works with the lean angle sensor so it's not just abs it's abs at lean and when you have a system that literally again, takes all the measurements and dictates front wheel speed and how you know meters per second square rated deceleration in very German term meters yeah. per second square yeah. makes me sound a little smart it's better than smarter than real. Yeah, right? you hang around right. too much with us. Yeah, I spend a little bit too much time. Start talking to meters and they want to talk about you know bar versus PSI. But at the end of the day to just have that confidence knowing that the system's actually intervening intervening and bleeding off through the master cylinder the pressure it's once you trust it again it's about trusting it comprehension first then trusting it applying it to where you start just doing both eyes open and yeah it's an amazing system yeah definitely um so last from system the new brake slider system and we'll, we'll, we'll start to wind this down there's a lot of cool things we Southern California on Saturday, so hopefully we're not boring you guys too much. And gals, excuse me, riders, how about that? Riders. Yeah, yeah but if brake slide, I think is something. So it's anyway the last one, but it's some special uh, in my opinion because it really also all the all the systems working together to to make the brake slide assist happen. So it really helps you to uh, when you slide into the corner to already make the right direction to hit the apex right um, to get your bike out of the uh, out of the corner correctly it's definitely a racetrack feature well absolutely course. a racetrack feature i mean that's, that's a good little asterisk um don't don't highly recommend don't do it on the you know, testing on the, on the public roads but uh but to be able to try to even comprehend how to use it and have those layers of insurance to say well what if I get it wrong? The system won't let you get it wrong, yeah. depending on the threshold, naturally. Um, but you've seen your heroes, especially getting the motorcycle sideways in the corner, backing it into the corner to actually get the bike pointed even easier and quicker. Not easier, it's easier said than done, but quicker, there's a function behind it. But to be able to have that system on a road bike that's taken to the track without having to go get a race license. It's phenomenal the time and dime that it takes to get racing to do it safely. So now you're, you're that much closer to your heroes. Yeah. And how it works, you you have to apply good amount of front brake, lean in, full rear brake, and then the it will come sideways and do its own thing till you release the brake in the front again. And uh, how, how is the combination is the engine brake control with the ABS together. So they, they recognize how much 
factory as how much um, rearable spin um, they need and then they adjust the angle. So it always will be around 8 to 12 percent angle. So, so basically you can literally with in, in that combination front brake first and a rather heavy amount of front brake for, to get the weight transfer and as it senses you're going to the rear brake to start to, start to initiate the slide yeah. It will literally take engine brake torque management along with the slip of the rear yes. wheel along with the ABS yep. and it releases, activates, releases. It does it so lightning fast that at the end of the day, you're able to get it sideways just like the flight control on the exit where it only gets a certain slip rate and it won't anymore. It'll hold you there instead of coming all the way around. So now, once you get it just right and you trust it, you're Basically, no need to go get a race license and spend all that money to chase and glory. Yeah. Just do it. <laughs> but thank goodness, because the product turns out absolutely awesome, which you guys, I think, can attest to. So, again, thank you for your time. And uh, yeah. truly, any questions you have, just answer us. Yeah. Yeah. So, thank you very much. Cool.